At the solemn request of our new king, the royal geomancer has determined that the new capital of the Shang dynasty is to be at a site that shall henceforth be known as Zhengzhou. It will be located on a hill overlooking the river. To ensure the security of the city, engineers have already been at work on the city's fortifications. Use the guidelines of Feng Shui to help locate an appropriate site for the king's palace. Establish an elite neighborhood of lavish Xie Wands and designate one or two wards for common citizens. Bales of hemp must be procured through trade, as it cannot be grown here. Fortunately, there are other cities looking for wood and ceramics. A ferry will provide access to the abundant deposits of copper ore on the far side of the river. The bronze will be of use not only for bronzeware, but also for weapons. Begin training and equipping some infantry without undue delay. You just might need them, as barbarians covet the riches of our land. Welcome back to Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. So moving on once more to Zhengzhou. And we have elite housing that we're going to need to deal with. An allied city is new. A fairly high population and the ferry is new. The palace is new. There's definitely some new mechanics here. Although we're not going to be able to do this map exactly the way it's intended and still maintain our perfect feng shui. From the starting condition here, we can see that the walls of Zhengzhou are a very literal name for this mission. We got this big wall all the way around. They've clearly done a lot more than simply begin the fortifications here. And then we've got all this area inside to build, or we can build outside. We've got the river, we've got some rocks. There's some salamanders down here that we won't need to interact with, but down here is where all the bronze is. So there's a lot of different things to be doing on this map. Historically, the walls were very impressive and rectangular on the inside, but the outside was more circular in keeping with Chinese cosmological beliefs. There was very much a double wall situation going on, and it is one of the more impressive walled structures, cities, at its time anywhere in the world. The Shang Dynasty did move around a lot due to frequent natural disasters, but this was a very key capital for them. Moving out to the Empire View, uh, Zhengzhou was for about a 2,000 year period, maybe 1600 BCE to about 5 or 600 AD, one of the most important cities in China, and again gained some importance in the modern age, although it was not actually called Zhengzhou until about 600 AD. But the Yellow River Flood of 1938, when the dikes were sabotaged, by the nationalist Chinese in order to try to slow down the advancing Japanese army. That happened very close to Zhengzhou. So there aren't many cities in China that have more of a rich history to them. So we've got a bunch of different industrial options. We've got the usual clay stuff. We've got the kilns, bronzeware. We've got both weavers and jade carvers, so all of that is in place. The logging shed, bronze smelter, and then on the agricultural side, again, we can't do the hemp, as mentioned in the briefing, but we've got silk here. And we have just the regular farmhouse, but cabbage, mill, and wheat, so already three types of food. And then we can fish for a fourth type. So there are a great number of options on the military. We can change all these fortifications, tower, city, wall, and gate. Those are all now available to us as well. We don't have to keep this as it is if we do not want to. Jumping in near the end of the first year in December, we have our initial housing loop still being built up here. Grand way to make sure all these services are at their maximum efficiency. And inside of the walls, there is not very many places to put good inspector's towers. I've got one here to cover this stretch. The mill is using all four different types of food, which means it won't have that much of each. But limited choices in actually making this work without going outside the walls, where there are a lot more rocks outside the walls and easier places to put inspectors. Now, because of the size of this, again, we do need 1,300 people. I was able to get a, two farms running right away. Also didn't have to worry about hemp, which made that easier as well. So each of these has the three different sections for crops, wheat, cabbage, and millet, equal numbers of fields for each. And 
boosting up the food a lot more quickly than we've been able to on a lot of the other maps. And then we have fishing operation going on down on the river, a couple of keys here, and a third key over this way. And we were offered trade with Bon Po, or Bo, excuse me, almost immediately. And that'll allow us to get some hemp, and it hasn't actually come in yet, but it will fairly soon. And then, our other trade options, I did send out emissaries to all of them. Bon Po is the only one who approved, and we're actually not interested in trading with them, because we don't want to sell anything they want to buy, and we don't want to buy anything they want to sell. Baoji, I would like to get eventually. They could buy our ceramics and cabbage, but I'm going to want to import bronze. We'll see why in a bit. And that is going to be the only city that we can actually do that from on this map. The Nomad Camps, they would buy our silk, but I think we've got better options for that. And I don't intend to do jade, so that makes them not as good of a choice. Khufu would like to be our third and final trade partner. And they are going to buy wood from us and silk. And then they, again, could give us jade, but we don't actually want to buy anything there. Now, there are some new options that have unlocked here. I don't plan on using them on this scenario, but it's still worth looking at them. We can demand all manner of goods, just like they can demand goods from us. And we can attack and conquer other cities I prefer not to use the demand option just because I like to manage my own economy and make a profit that way. And the attacking other cities will become more of something that we'll need to use later on in some other scenarios. But I'm not going to be doing that here. So, as to our bronze in this map. Well, the idea, as mentioned in the briefing, is you need to use the fairies to get to it. And the way the fairies work is you place one on one bank and it gives you, you see the little green squares here and here, it gives you the options for other places you want to build them across the river. You build them in pairs. Place the other fairy landing across the river. And then you get the road complaint. Okay, building means access to a road. So let's give it a road. And then once you do that, fairy on the opposite shore has no road. Okay. Put one right by that. Now it's working. It says the ferry landing is sending sampans across the river. Okay, and they will move in their small boats to drag resources across whichever direction they need to go. So that's all very nice. Let's try to set up our bronze here. Well, there's plenty of it along here, but if we try to place, you can see we're having trouble fighting actual decent feng shui. There's only one place that we can put a smelter. And there it is. So if we did that, well, the problem is there isn't even one place that we can put the inspector's tower because there's too many trees. There are rocks, but there are too many trees making the overall nature of every possible location to be inauspicious. So this would just burn down before it had a chance to really do much of anything, and we would fail to get any bronze operation going. So if we wanted to actually make a go at this, the only real way to make it happen would be to just knock down trees. And we would need more than one bronze smelter to make this work anyway. I mean, to get the amount we'd want to have on this map, we'd probably want at least two of them, maybe three. So if we knock down all of that, then we could, you know, slide a smelter in here, and we could put a tower up by it. Now we do have enough trees cleared to have harmonious feng shui, and we can connect up here, and all of that will work. Then we would begin building some industries on this side. Probably begin with a bit of clay. And then we would put up, not those, bronzeware makers and probably a weaponsmith and import the bronze from across the river. We could export the bronzeware to some of our trading partners and that would be a really good early trade good and then build up into the military production later on. 
However, this would, of course, violate my whole idea with the approach of playing this in a pristine manner. That is, we're not doing any landscape, not clearing any trees, and still attempting to get the perfect feng shui. So I'm going to end up importing what I'm going to be doing for the bronze, and then not using the fairy at all. We will use the fairy in later scenarios, but just not for this one. I just want to hang on here and get one of these smelted so we can see them pulling it across the river. There we go. So the dragging it off to the ferry. Then they take off with it in the boat. And haul it off the other ferry and it goes off to where it is needed. So we're back in December then. And since bronzeware isn't an option, I'm going to lean into the ceramics instead. Just going to start with that, because I really want to get silk going before the next growing season begins. I am going to need to wait, though, for some new arrivals. Probably be good to get a ceramic shop up here so that it's ready. And only mill here now, but they're bringing in some cabbage. There'll be time for celebrations later. Those folks at the hemp farm are a bit odd, but if they keep me well supplied, how can I complain? Looks like we're headed over here to do our initial hemp buy. Okay, I think we're good now. And this is not a perfect area over here, but it's pretty darn good. Just the one tree spot will be blocking our mulberry trees. And there we are. Go ahead and throw up our second kiln here. We're probably going to be ready for that soon if we're not already. And then we'll need to get an herbalist stall and also music to continue the evolution. Really? One short. That should be enough. Throw up the music school. There we go. Right, let's scale up our ceramics operation next. Then I think we'll get a weaver. We'll be bringing in some silk probably fairly soon, but actually, I don't have a storage area yet. I need that. Okay. This is really an excellent place for a warehouse, I think. A lot of maps I've had trouble finding warehouse locations, but that's not so on this one. 
This is going to be the shortest patrol area pretty much ever. Now I want to store food only in this first one. It's basically just going to be a carbon copy backup of the mill. And then this one will be my general use. So let's grab a whole bunch of ceramics and some silk and some wood eventually. And we shouldn't really need anything else for the time being. Okay. So I think I want to work towards some taxing next. Logging shed. And three of the kilns now operating. Not all of them yet. Keep going on that clay. We have everything over here to evolve houses all the way up as far as they're going to be able to go. Still no ceramics at the shop, though. Got to wait for them to haul some over to our warehouse and get them in place. Okay, this should be close enough to throw up our administrative city. Now the inspectors come all the way down here, so they will pass by it. Just a hair short on labor. And ready now for the tax office. They're just bringing over some wood, so that should get thrown over there fairly quickly. Starting to work on the silk here. That's good. Okay. Throw up another weaver. And then I'm going to do even more ceramics. Let's go ahead and move this roadblock. A little further out of the way. Really? I misjudged the workers again. Not by much. Stop complaining about small things. One kiln there, we'll put another one over here. We only need about 200 more people to meet that particular goal. But this should really just, I want to ramp up our ceramics as quickly as possible. I'm going to speed this up a bit because at this point, I just want to save the money we have. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. We're going to need almost all of it to do all the emissaries we need to acquire the trade partners and build up the trading posts and all of that. I'm going to start doing some homage offerings with our extra food as well. And I just want them to make lots and lots of pots and also some silk. Okay, let's lower that. We'll also lower our tax rate so that people don't get too upset about having higher taxes than wages. That does not seem to usually go well. But at least that's some money that will be coming in. I'm finding it easier to just use this sort of commodity screen to just check on how much everything we have. Okay, that's enough ceramics. So, Bao Zhi actually improved its opinion of me for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and offer them trade, but we also want to bribe them anyway, because I want them to be my ally. I need one from somewhere, and they seem to be a city that's 
likes us fairly w reasonably. Definitely more than Khufu does. Nope. Don't have that to spare. Millet's pretty high. Let's use some of that. So basically anytime I get near max storage on something, I'm just gonna throw it at the ancestors. Lots of cabbage. That I'm not actually going to donate because I don't mind if cabbage maxes out. We're actually going to be able to sell some of it. We do have enough silk now. I could wait, but I don't want to. I want to get trade with Khufu as soon as possible. They actually are going to demand some silk later. That's... We could use that to boost our relations with them, but I would prefer to just bribe them and get it going a little more quickly. Okay. Baoji is happy with us, and they also will trade. So they have a trading key. Trade by water, which is our first adventure in that. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do trade with Baoji. But also... This is the only place on the map, as far as I know, that this will fit with Harmonious Feng Shui. At least it's the only place I don't currently have occupied. That's why I didn't do any fishing here earlier. And I just want to make sure we connect a whole bunch of roads to this. And then this way as well. Couple roadblocks. Connect you up. And then here we're just going to sell cabbage for the moment. We want to sell ceramics, we want to buy bronze. We can't afford to do that yet. Not until we know that we're going to get our alliance with Baoji. We need all of our ceramics to go bribe them. And here comes the ship with nothing to buy, but that's the trading ship. Make sure you pack those goods in tighter next time. We've got to make a profit off this junk. Lots of respect for your wares, I see. Some of the cabbage now getting hauled over here. Okay, so you were pretty happy with that. Let me throw you some wood as well. Oh, we don't have enough. Okay. Well, that's a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting that to happen. I guess I'll just throw you some hemp. We can always buy more. And we will try to open trade with you. And Baoji is still not quite as positive as I was hoping. So let's, haven't heard back from them. Let's send them another gift. We will give them as many ceramics as we have to in order to make them happy. waiting for our emissaries to make their way to the various locations. Everything churns along just fine here because we are over the 1300 mark. So that's one goal we have and Khufu agrees to trade. Outstanding. Okay. Let's get you rolling over here. For the moment, we're going to sell the excess wood, and we're going to sell silk. Okay. 
Now let's drop this back down, the silk part, to four. Ceramics is going to stay where it is for now. More wheat to donate. Hey, look. Even more wheat. You're going to buy some of our cabbage. That's the only thing that we're selling. It's not a great amount. But it will help us. Okay, we did get the ceramics to Baoji. Agreeable. Now, they have to be at least agreeable, in my experience, to ally with you. Next one up is admiring. Agreeable will sometimes work, though. And we will request an alliance. So if that works, then that'll be our second goal, because we have population, then we need to get the ally, and then it's only about the elite housing. Hope you like wheat, Huang Di, because you're getting a lot of it. So we are carting off some wood over here to try to make some sort of profit. Ceramics keep flowing in, just in case we need another bribe. Very nice. Khufu is willing to buy more silk. And we do get the ally. And now we are going to sell our ceramics. And we're going to drop back to keeping eight around here. It'll take some time for our city to use up those ceramics. I did reset my food here, did I not? I did not. They just went up to appetizing on their own. Which is great, but I should have boosted it myself. Please buy our pots so that we have the money to do other things. That would be great. A little bit of wood over there. We don't have a lot of silk available at the moment for our weavers. They do still have some over here though, of course it's a long haul. I did at one point cut through this wall, you can you know replace the gates and everything. I went over here to the mill, but then the workers were going around all this way to buy and then around all the way back. And that was just highly annoying and did not work out very well. As a run out of food due to the distance of travel. So, you know, rather than do that and try to make a shorter path, I'm just letting the AI walk around because it seems to be what it actually wants to do. We do have a bunch of cash that just came in. It must have just sold a bunch of silk. So I will go ahead and give the people their celebration. But then also I'm going to throw down another food shop just to make sure we have backup here. Doesn't hurt. I want to boost our hemp to eight. And then I also want to buy all the bronze they will sell us. Where does that leave us in terms of our popular you know, labor? Not high enough. I'm gonna yank this up. And this as well. Now there is one military option we can do. If we click this button, then we'll have people on the walls. And even though we had like 60 plus labor, now we're actually slightly short. And they will go around and basically shoot at anybody that's not supposed to be around here from their position on the walls. So that can help if you don't actually have any military, but you do have walls up. However, I'm not going to want to use that now because it's a time of peace. I see no enemy. 
But the Tao Te Ching says danger is greatest when you underestimate your opponent. Yep. So we will yank you down from there. We're going to go with a more traditional approach here of actually just building a bunch of weapons. And we may only be able to use two of these weapon smiths, but I'm going to put up a third anyway. And what I didn't do that I intended to do is take down these to get some more labor. So let's do that. There we go. And let's figure out where we are now. Uh, we have lots of them, <laughs> but we're going to use them. Because, boy, it's a little tight actually putting this up right now because they cost 375 Palace right next to the administrative city. Just sold a bunch more stuff, so that's great. It's the same basic design. It's just larger and a little bit more extravagant. Got the menagerie. We're not going to be dealing with the animals on display, but we get one fort possibility from the administrative city, a second from the palace. We can't actually evolve elite housing on this map due to the no acrobats, so we can't get a bonus to our fort cap from them. So we need the palace if we're going to have a second fort. I actually don't know if we're going to be able to utilize both forts, but we're going to put them up anyway. Okay, are you actually buying the bronze yet? We don't have any. Please come sell it to us so we can get this done. Let's get a couple forts up anyway, though. One there. And one over here. This one. Yes, you can go and have your silk. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's just go and run this along there a little more. Of course, again, I could come through the wall here, but I don't really have anywhere I need to get with this. So, I'm just kind of going to leave it there. Got our bronze here. Would you kindly take it to various places? They're working on it there. Please haul it away. There we go. Kufu is happy with us. I did reset my taxes. Yes, I did. Okay. Right now, I just need some money. Since we gave away our silk for the time being, we don't really have... That's our cash cow. We don't have a lot coming in. So we've got the cash. We have eventually sold some more items to bring that in. And we need to work on our final goal here, which is getting the elite housing set up. Now, I could actually not do any military on this map. We can actually win it before that shows up, much like we had happen with early Tau. But... I'm not going to take that particular approach in this case. So I do want to just come across here, right in front of the common market. And we have our wonderful inspector that's going to flow around and do what needs to happen. And we don't have so much money that I don't want to be cautious here at all. We've got time, so we're just going to wait for more to come in. Got some wood down here. Plenty of ceramics and cabbage waiting to be sold. So we've got, we've got money coming in. Now, 
In terms of the forts, this one, for whatever reason, is a lot more popular than this one is up here. But they are working on both of them as fast as they can. Importing bronze is a, is a fun task. And here we go. The Shan Nu army coming from the nomad camps again. And they will invade in nine months. Okay. So once again, we must defend against the barbarians who are different than us, which means they must be evil. Although in all fairness, they keep attacking us. We're not attacking them. So, you know, that might be an actual fair assessment. I think that's where I'm gonna want the road. We'll find out. You can always move it. Let's hold off on the cash. Just a little bit here. Here you go. You're gonna come buy more of our stuff, aren't you? And sell us a bunch of bronze, which is great, but we actually lost money on that exchange. Exactly why I'm holding it. Our weavers are, um, are bored at the moment. But there's some silk coming. So as soon as that gets over here and gets sold, we'll be able to proceed further. buying little bits of wood, but not a whole lot there in terms of income. Yes, yeah, six months. Will we be prepared? Well, we've got several soldiers here now. A few over here. I think so. Having to import the bronze and the hemp on this map is definitely putting a damper in our profitability. It's requiring me to take a little bit longer and be a little bit more cautious. Now we're up to about a thousand though. And here comes more silk. away the last of our bronze so we're definitely having no trouble using it and more weapons coming over here Wang Di is still happy although we could throw some more wheat I suppose And here comes some of our silk. Which will eventually get us some more cashola.
All right, let's set up the rest of this if we can. Two months, so good timing. Let's go ahead and throw gardens in the middle. I'm only gonna put one of these up for now. I actually want to wait for that attack to show up. And four of these units is enough. And I did have this open to the market, right? Yes, I did. But I did not open this gate. That's what I didn't do. Okay. So I need the peddlers to be able to come over here and give these food. I mean, I don't really, because they can't improve the houses anyway. I can actually have these people starve and nobody will care, but... Okay. One month, they will be here. So now I'm going to move up my wage rate. Let's man the walls. I'll probably have to move it up again. Yep. Let's go and jack up the taxes one level as well. Not that we need it, but we'll just take that little bit of extra protection. And all we need to do is put down this final one after we have defeated them. Okay. We can surrender. Lose the game. Hmm. How about no? You know what, let's hold a festival while we're in the middle of an attack. Why not? Okay, so where are they? Let's see what happens. Here we go. Yes, we have some horsemen that are unhappy with us. Let's bring all of you right over here. I'm going to leave these soldiers up here just for now. There's not that many of them. You can see they're trying to shoot at them from up here. Bad things are happening to our warehouse. Indeed. Are you coming today? Get over here and defend the city. So our food warehouse is no more. We lose anything else. They're shooting at our delivery guys. But now the army finally decides to show up. And, uh... They're standing here like idiots. Now they're moving forward on the attack. And we have defeated them. Crushed by our forces, the weakling soldiers are in full retreat led by their embarrassed ruler. I'm not sure I'd go quite that far. But we did succeed. Yay, good job. Now go back to where you're supposed to be. So this is burning. And uh, nobody's doing anything about it, which is awesome. We have our inspector here, but he's pacing back and forth while the rubble burns from. There we go. There we go. Now, now, now you're getting the idea. I don't really need to fix this, but it just feels wrong to just leave it like this. Oh, good. More stuff is burning. They actually did save the, the inspector's tower. Okay then. Let's replace our warehouse. You must build on cleared land. Oh, did I miss a piece of rubble? I did. Okay. So yeah, I'm not going to bother resetting up our storage because that's kind of pointless at this stage. And we will now hop right back over here with plenty of money. And let's throw in our last bit of elite housing. We just need some people to move in. 
Our inspectors are managing to handle this block, which is nice. We are getting some service from the market. And I suppose we can probably take our guards off the walls. And that should handle our situation. Protected it with vigor. Like a young tree in a fierce wind, you weathered the first storm without breaking. Those Xiongnu horsemen were a determined foe. Sadly, I fear it is not the last we will see of them. Well, we'll be ready when they come back. They were a little bit on the tougher side to kill, but they weren't that many of them, so they didn't scare me too severely. In any case, we have completed our first walled city. Now that we've built a new capital, where will we be sent off to next? I'll have to wait and see you next time on Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. Thanks for watching, everyone.